Today we will talk about the structure and function of the blood vessels. When we talk about the human body, there are three main blood vessels you need to focus on. Arteries, veins, and capillaries. In order to better understand this, we need a picture of the pulmonary and systemic circulation. Now let's talk about the arterial system first. The primary job of the arteries is to carry oxygen and blood away from the heart to their target tissues and organs. So if you look at the diagram, all the vessels in red, this is the arterial system. And one exception here is the pulmonary vein. So if you look up here in the pulmonary system, the lungs pick up oxygen and via the pulmonary veins, bring oxygenated blood back into the left atrium. So the pulmonary vein is the only vein in the human body that is oxygenated. All other veins are deoxygenated. So once blood is dropped off to their target tissues and organs, blood needs to come via the venous system, which has deoxygenated blood and needs to come back to the heart. Once in the heart and in the right atrium, blood goes to the right ventricle and out of the heart to the lungs to pick up oxygen once again. Now, if you look at the vessel that's located here, this is the pulmonary artery. This is the only artery in the body that is deoxygenated. So remember, make a mental note of this artery and this vein. Everywhere else in the human body is the complete opposite. All arteries carry oxygen, all veins carry deoxygenated blood, except for these two. Now there is a collection of vessels located between the arteries and the veins called the capillaries. This is where all exchange of nutrients, oxygen, and waste happens. Now let's look at the different types of arteries in the body. There are three types of arteries. The first one is called the elastic artery, which is located very close to the heart. They are the largest and the thickest. That is because of the high pressure exerted by the heart. These arteries need to be very large and thick to protect them from this blood pressure. As arteries move further away from the heart, they branch off into what we call muscular arteries. These are the most abundant, and these are the arteries that branch off into different organs. These are under direct supervision of the autonomic nervous system where you regulate blood pressure. As you move further away from there, you divide into smaller arterioles, which are the smallest of the arteries, and they go right into the capillary bed. When we talk about the veins and how they're broken down, they're broken down into three types, small, medium, and large veins. You can see from the capillary bed, deoxygenated blood is sent back to the venules, into larger veins, and even larger vena cava, which is the superior and inferior vena cava, and is very close to the heart and dumps off all the oxygenated blood here. The capillary system is a collection of vessels located between the arteries and the veins. They are single celled and this is where all nutrients, gas exchange, and waste are dropped off and picked up. There are different types of capillaries in the body. The first one is the continuous capillaries. They are the most common found in the skin and in the muscles. The fenestrated capillaries, these are covered with pores. These holes allow nutrients and hormones to enter very easily. And the last one is the sinusoid capillaries found in the liver, bone marrow, spleen, and the adrenal medulla. Now let's look at the structure of the artery, vein, and capillaries. When we look at the outermost layer of the artery and the vein first, these are made up of a layer called the tunica externa or tunica adventitia. They are made up of elastin and collagen which provide support and structure to the artery and the vein. They are arranged in concentric patterns on both of them. Now let's go to the middle layer. The middle layer is made up of a layer called the tunica media. This is made up of smooth muscles and elastin fibers. 
This is the one I mentioned earlier, is under direct supervision of the autonomic nervous system, which helps the vessels vasoconstrict to bring the blood pressure up and vasodilate to bring the blood pressure down. The vasodilation can happen as a result of shock or sometimes allergic reactions. And this is why it's very serious because the blood pressure can drop very quickly and causing severe syncope, shortness of breath, and even passing out. Now the innermost layer of these two vessels is called the tunica interna. This is made up of the subendothelium and the endothelial layer. Now the one exception of the veins is that they have what we call valves located in them. And these are primarily in the lower extremities. And this is the one-way valve that allows blood to come up from the legs back into the heart. If these valves are ever damaged, or you have a genetic predisposition or a problem, then you can imagine this blood flow can have a hard time going up and it can go back where it doesn't really want to. And if this happens, you have increased hydrostatic pressure here, and this can lead to edema. And also that blood, as it sits there, it can also coagulate and cause blood clots. The early sign of this is what we call varicose veins because of the pooling of blood. Now let's look at the structure of the capillary. Capillary is just a single endothelial layer with a small lumen. The lumen is just a hollow area where blood is going to be transported. Now in this diagram, I wanted to show you the diameter of the vessels as they leave the heart. You can see this is the aorta. And as this starts to branch off into the muscular arteries and into the arterioles, they get smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to the capillaries, which all the exchange of nutrients happens here. Then the size of the vessels as it goes back to the heart via the venules, veins, and vena cava enlarge again. The next diagram is representing the cross-sectional area of the vessels. So as the aorta branches off into the smaller muscular arteries and then even more smaller arterioles and then giving way to the capillaries, you can see the total cross-sectional area where all the exchange happens actually increases because of all of these divisions of these vessels. And as it goes back to the heart, the cross-sectional area decreases. So when you have one vessel, just the aorta, you can see the cross-sectional area is very small. But when you have many, many capillaries, you have a lot of cross-sectional area. And you need this because you're going to have a lot of exchange of nutrients happening here. You want a lot of area to drop off stuff and also pick up a lot of waste. The next diagram represents the average blood flow through these arteries and veins. Starting from the aorta and going into the muscular arteries and the arterioles, capillaries, venules, veins, and vena cava, you can see the blood pressure drops from the bigger arteries. And as it goes to the veins, blood pressure is significantly dropping and getting slower and slower. Now let's look at the velocity of the blood flow. It starts out very fast. And the slowest velocity is evident in the capillary system. Because you want blood to flow really slowly here, it has the most surface area. You want to be able to drop off all the nutrients that you need to and pick up all the waste that you need to. So you don't want this blood gushing so fast through here that you don't drop off or pick up anything. So this is the reason for the velocity and the drop in blood pressure uh, in the capillaries is to allow ample time for a gas exchange to happen. And then you can see as you go back up into the veins and vena cava, the velocity picks up a little bit because you want the blood to go back up via the legs, via the veins, back into the heart. I hope that was helpful. Now let's summarize what we learned today. 
between the arteries, veins, and the capillaries. The primary job of the arterial system is to carry blood away from the heart, and that is oxygenated blood. The pressure in the arterial system is very high. The lumen diameter is narrow. The wall thickness is very thick because they need to be strong to withstand that pressure. The wall layers are made up of an uh, inner layer called the tunica intima, middle layer, tunica media, and the tunica externa, the outer layer. It is composed of large amounts of muscle and elastic fibers, and it has no valves. The veins carry blood towards the heart, and they are carrying deoxygenated blood. They have low pressure. They are wide. They have thin walls. They have all three layers. They have small amounts of elastin and muscle fibers, and they have valves that are present. The capillaries is where most gas exchange nutrients and waste pick up and drop off happen. Pressure is very low to allow ample time for this to happen. Lumen diameter extremely narrow, one cell wide. The wall thickness is extremely thin, one cell thick. Only has the endothelial layer, which is made up of the tunica intima. It has no muscle or elastic fibers, and it has no valves.